to really celebrate these two films, I'm incorporating some bro speak into the episode. So grab yourself a cold one or whatever your aphrodisiac may be, because it's feuding time. It's going down. Timber. Let's talk about what the f these movies have in common. My boy Chaytap plays Jenko, and he absolutely kills the shit out of these pictures, for real bro. My other dog Jonah Hill plays Schmidt, and even though he's funny as f I think Tatum is amazeballs. Feel me? Yo, Ice Cube steals both movies as Captain Dickinson, and Nick Offerman is always a welcome a dish as Chief Hardy. Jillian Bell's the newcomer to 22 Jump, she plays Mercedes, she's funny as f shit. She was hilarious on Workaholics. If you haven't seen that show, check it. It's straight money. In the bank. You can go there, deposit it. You can take out a loan if you want, but it's foolish. Keep your money in the bank. Save it. Her geezer comments alone were cash money penis. There was a nice cameo from Franco, but he was so platinum in the first movie, it was sick. All right, there's no way I'm going to keep doing this bro speak. It started out as a good idea, but it's, it's starting to hurt. I think I shit my pants. Check it, this is gonna be a wicked f***ing easy round to talk about because 22 and 21, they have the same plots, yo. Okay, I can't stop doing it now. 21 Jump Street has our boys in blue going undercover as high school students, and 22 Jump Street has them going undercover as college students. I'm glad the plots are similar, I'm glad they're stupid. Some of my favorite comedies to date have virtually no plots. It's all about the small sequences. It's all about getting our characters into crazy situations and letting them run with it. If we break down the moment to moment events, I can think of a handful of really funny scenes in both. The now classic throw up scene from the first is still probably the best thing to come out of the new franchise, but I got a kick out of the bromance being formed by Jenko and football jock Zoop. The meta references in the sequel are gold as well. Embracing how much of a cash grab it is was a brilliant move. Every time they mentioned how things are exactly the same again had me LOLing in the theater with my friends that I pretend to have when I go there alone. I do think 21 had a better pacing and the Johnny Depp cameo was great. It might all be Donald Trumped by 22's ending though. The 30 or so spoof films at the end had me rolling on the floor laughing my ass off with all my friends. Keep in mind I have no real friends there, I'm by myself. So there I am, on the floor, naked, laughing hysterically while people are stepping over my body for the exit. Yeah, I'm also naked here. There's some good action and effects to go around. These are cop films after all, so we get the standard high-speed chases, house party fights, crazy interaction with animals such as squids and lobsters and some cool stunt work on a helicopter. But for me, the action and effects are the low point of these films. I like it when it's more grounded, when we get more direct dialogue between the characters. And you can tell there's a good amount of improv going on. Usually it works. Sometimes it doesn't, as is the case of 22 Jump Street 2, and the overuse of my most hated word in the English dictionary, literally. That reminds me, Gareth, why don't you bring up the public service announcement I did a while back. Oh, hello, I didn't hear you come in. I'm Adam Mullinger, and today I'm here to talk to you about something serious. Literally. Every day in the world, millions of people are pissing the hell out of me by saying the word literally when it's not necessary. You've probably said it two or three times today alone, and I can guarantee you've heard it that many, if not more. But Adam, I'm using the word correctly. Are you though? Are you? Let's use an example. Your buddy comes over and tells you a story. He says, I was at the grocery store the other day and I literally saw Natasha there. Do you see the problem with that? If not, let me run it down for you. I wasn't racking my brain thinking of whether or not Bennett was at the store today. I just assumed he'd be telling me the truth. Why would he lie about such a pointless, stupid thing? Literally should be used to diffuse any sort of confusion one might have when you're talking to them. Example. I f***ing hate cats. I literally want to eat the face off of everyone I see. Now, what just happened there? I use literally to tell you I really, in fact, do want to eat a cat's face. I want to take their face off. Ah, Nicolas Cage reference. Bottom line is this. Don't use the word literally. Just toss it aside like a used up whore. The word's been beaten into the ground. It's been beaten harder than a high school kid's dick. Don't even bother with figuratively. It's an awful word to say and it's even worse to hear. There's no reason to use either of them though. They're just filler words. 
Thank you for taking the time to listen. This was a public service announcement, and I hope you use this new information, this education I've given you, to reach out to the public and help others around you. Literally, oh, I almost caught myself. Good night. No, I don't even want to talk about music. I'm so upset about this literally fiasco still. Move on. You bitches like Jump Street now. Hey. I was pleasantly surprised by both these films. Nobody thought that a remake of a TV show into a movie was going to work. And certainly no one thought it was going to work twice. I'm hoping there's a third one even. Because these are some of the funniest comedies that have been coming out in the last decade. That's kind of sad, but true, Metallica. Let's hear what you have to say, though. Pop a comment below, like, subscribe, tweet, Facebook, Instagram, Vine, Tinder. Now I'm just saying apps. Now I'm just saying apps. This is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. Did, did you just say I'm literally leaving? I can see you're literally leaving, you're walking at the door. I'm literally gonna kick your ass.